Hey, good morning, church. I'm down here at uh, CTK, just getting ready for the service tomorrow, and uh, we're back in the book of James again this week. And, and so as we've been going through the book of James, uh, we've just been talking about what a spiritually mature uh, Christian looks like. So I just want to share with you guys this week uh, something we use here at CTK. It's, it's supplied to us uh, from the Navigator's um, ministry, and it's called The Wheel. And you, some of you have heard it all before, but I'm just going to go over quickly again uh, just a, a tool that we use to identify what a spiritually mature Christian looks like. So let's take a look. Uh, we got crisis center. So at the middle is the hub. It's the part of a wheel that sends power out. It's the part attached to the main driving force that sends power out to the rest of the tire. And, and for a mature Christian, that part is crisis center. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So in the center, we've got Christ the center, the most important part, the hub of the whole ordeal. And then on the outside of the wheel, we've got obedience to Christ. It's the part that touches the ground, the part that everyone sees, the part where the rubber really meets the road. You know, when you think of a tire on the car, um, you look at a tire and you can, you can tell a lot about a, a, a wheel based on how the tire is doing, the wear pattern. You can tell if the hub's good based on the, on the wheel. You can tell based on the, uh, how the spokes are doing based on the wear pattern of the tire. The power goes from the center out through the spokes uh, to the outer part of the tire. Likewise, power goes out from the hub, from Christ the center through the spokes. Power is applied to your life through obedience to Christ. John 14, 21 says, Whoever has my commands and keeps them, he is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. So what do the spokes look like? Well, the spokes that send power from Christ the center out to your obedience to Christ. The first one is, is the Word of God. Through the Word, God speaks to us and shows himself to us. Having a daily time spent in the Word of God is crucial in your life with Jesus. Joshua 1 8 says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. So that's the vertical spoke down. Then the, the vertical spoke going up is, is prayer. Prayer is a natural response to God when He speaks to you. Through, through prayer, we learn to turn our ear toward God. The things He wants to say to us. And the things that we want to say to him, we get to speak with God when we pray. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Then another spoke we have is the, the fellowship spoke. Through fellowship with other believers, we gather together, we sing praises to our Lord Jesus. We spur one another on. We encourage them when they need encouragement. Uh, we maybe give them a loving word when they need some, some rebuking. God called us not to be loners and, and single-minded people in our, our, our life with Christ, but to, to be in fellowship with fellow believers. When we're, and when we're, in, when we're in fellowship, we're sending power out through our obedience to Christ. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. And the last spoke we have in this, uh, this, this wheel representation is the spoke of witnessing. See, when Christ is at the center of your life, your natural response should be to want to tell others about what he's done for you, what he's doing for you, how he saved you. And not only should it be a natural response, but it actually is your responsibility as a Christian. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. So there's a super quick and dirty overview of the wheel, what a mature Christian looks like. And uh, yeah, that's just one of the tools we use here at CTK to, uh, to take a look at our life. Just look at introspect on your life. How are you doing on each of those spokes? Are you obedient? Do you have Christ at the center? And so that's just a good tool for you to use as we go through uh, what it looks like to be a spiritually mature Christian. So tomorrow we're in James chapter 2. 
I want to encourage you to just take a quick read over it. It is going to be a good one tomorrow because we've got some controversy. Uh, the famous preacher Martin Luther said about James, he said, this is an epistle of straw. And I like to think that James chapter 2 is probably what he was talking about. So uh, we're going to have some fun going through it tomorrow. Um, hey, if you need to get tickets, uh, don't forget to get tickets at the 9.30 or the 11 o'clock service on Sunday. You can do that on our website. Or if you're joining with us online, um, we're live on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website, ctkgibsons.com. Uh, we're live streaming both services, 9.30 and 11. So we've got worship led by Ken. Uh, we'll be in the book of James, James chapter 2 tomorrow. So take a quick read over, just familiarize yourself with James chapter 2, and uh, otherwise have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow.